that goes down there to benefit. We have roads that are done. This is how we benefit directly from this pay. So how will this housing levy benefit the person who is actually paying this levy? If you don't change this issue, and I'm glad the chair is still here for housing because we've had a side chat with him, and I respect the member for a, a Murua Dikir, that I submit to him that this makes it, uh, it will be another challenge for this bill, and when we go to court of law, they will set it aside. Why? Because you've not shown, you've levied a tax, but you're not showing how we are going to benefit. An honorable speaker, there is the issue of, and allow me to speak of Embakasi West and Nairobi, and the leader of majority, and I don't know, he stepped out, he's asked us, the, the members of parliament, we should write uh, and indicate the land where we're supposed to construct these houses. Honorable Speaker, I have a school with 4,000 students, 182 students in one classroom. I'm looking for land to build a new school. How will I convince the residents of that ward that I can set aside land to build houses that will be privately owned? And yet, in that entire ward, I've only got one public school. And this is the case all over Nairobi. We have an issue where we've built affordable housing, especially in Islam, Honorable Speaker. I'll be honest, we have slums where we have rentals going for 500. We have houses going for 1,000, 2,000 in Dandora, three, four, and as you accelerate all the way, you get to Buruburu, where you can afford to pay a house of 50,000, depending with your strength. Honorable Speaker, those are the affordable houses that we have in our constituencies. And what we need, Honorable Speaker, we need titles. We've built houses, we need them regularized. You cannot tell us to now come and build new houses. We have houses in Nairobi. We've built them already. Regularize them, those are our affordable houses. We are okay. We don't need any more. We don't need any more. Those are sufficient for us. And let us remember, Honorable Speaker, the majority of those who are being paid salaries are here in Nairobi, Honorable Speaker. And if you look at the number of even houses being built here in Nairobi, it's unfair. So how will you convince all these people where 60% of the GDP is here in Nairobi and you're not even giving us that equivalent here in Nairobi? So we have a huge issue with that one. Honorable Speaker, let me remind my colleagues across the side, and I'm happy, Honorable Mbadi, because he might remind me. President Kibaki built houses in this Nairobi. He didn't impose a levy. They are here in Langata. President Uhuru built houses in Starehe. I wish the member of Starehe was here. They are here in Pangani. No levies were imposed. So you, it's not something new. And that's why as Azimio, we were willing to support. We had this in our manifesto because we knew we could do it without asking for any extra money. So, Honorable Speaker, I want to speak also about my constituents. Some of the areas you've been pointing out where you want to demolish slums and build them. We've had uprisings and, and, and all sorts of mandamano going on in Nairobi because nobody wants their houses to be demolished. So we submit to you that we do have a form of affordable housing. It might not be the best, but it's what Kenyans can afford right now. And finally, Honorable Speaker, because I will have quite a number of amendments that I will bring in a bit later on. Honorable Speaker, let me caution, based on how this criteria has been put here. Honorable Speaker, before I became a member of parliament, when I was an advocate trying out, then I was earning a salary of 20,000. I had the opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to apply for an affordable housing scheme that is here at Nyayo Estate. Honorable Speaker, if there is a place where there was a lot of corruption and you needed to know somebody, was that scheme. That is how you've exposed us in this new bill. And I want to, I want to urge you, and I'm seeing the Honorable Owen by is really paying attention. I urge you to go to Nyayo Estate. Those affordable houses, as they were considered then, because about seven, eight hundred thousand. 
see the people who own them. It is the wealthy people during that regime who own those houses there. They own 10, 15 houses. People who are cabinet secretaries, PSs, members of parliament, those are the people who ended up owning those houses there. The way this bill is crafted, Honorable Speaker, the criteria that it is a simple ID, it is so subjective, it means somebody somewhere will choose and determine who is to get a house. And that is it. It doesn't matter what you contributed, what you gave out. All that will not be considered. This might boil down to the tribe, skin of your color, the depth of your pocket, who you voted for, party, share ownership. All that kind of nonsense is what will be considered. And they will ignore the fundamental issue of what we as Azimio wanted to sort out by creating affordable housing at a low cost without adding a single shilling to the taxpayer. So I'm going to urge uh, the chair of the committee because we will have a bigger discussion during the third reading. Allow us to amend this bill as your colleague uh, from Kenya Kwanzaa, Honorable Fadina Wanyonyi, uh, said, and allow us to even delete each and every single clause here and redraft this bill afresh. And we have, we do have the strategy. We do have the plan. Allow this issue to be a bipartisan issue where we can give you a better bill without adding a single shilling, a single tax to Kenyans out there. So, Honorable Speaker, in this current form, I apologize, I've not had a chance to look at the report of the committee because it came out at night, and I'm hoping some of these issues, we're going to look at them in depth. But, Honorable Speaker, the way it is, I'm sorry, but I cannot support this bill in its current form. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you.